Diablo 4 huge gameplay leaks. Here we go. So about an hour of Diablo 4 gameplay leaked a few days ago. Uh, this came amid those massive GTA 6 leaks and kind of got lost in the shuffle as a result. Not for me though. I couldn't care less about GTA, but Diablo, that is my jam. So while everyone else was distracted with this GTA mm -hmm. business, as well as a lot of Twitch drama, coincidentally, tangentially related to the world of gaming, yeah, that I heard was also about keeping that. people busy. As for me, I sat down and watched every single second of this Diablo 4 leak, all mm -hmm. 53 total minutes or whatever it was, going through frame by frame, and oh boy, do we have some stuff to talk about. A lot of really cool things here from various gameplay systems, a look at the combat, how that's been shaping up. We saw like world traversal and exploration systems, right. gathering. Yes, there is gathering in this game like an MMO. Gotta look at That's some good. I'm really glad to see that. I think that really what they should do with Diablo 4 is they should have people that play Lost Ark and people play Lost Ark, they see like, what are the cool elements of this game? I, I think the gathering and little things like that are great in Lost Ark and just put those things in Diablo Immortal. It's that simple dungeons, as well as a peek at the in-game cash shop along with their current prices, which if my conversion estimates are at all accurate, it actually doesn't seem that bad. You know, in the context of it would be great if this game didn't have a cash shop and a season's pass, but that's not really likely. So we're already past that point. It's like, okay, yes, it, it's, it, so I do think that Diablo 4 having a cash shop is not unethical. I, I don't think it's unethical, and I think that everything that Diablo has shared about their cash shop plan, none of it is blatantly unethical. The reason why I don't think so is because the game is a live service game that re that will receive continuous updates and development, and it's a, it's a one-time buy. I think having a cash shop for a one-time buy game that is a live service game is totally fucking fair in today's like live service environment but we don't need to go into that shtick like every time this topic comes up yeah, point yeah, is yeah. does seem relatively fair if my guesses are accurate but everything like all this stuff is way up in the air it involves a little bit of guesswork yes and it okay. is of course subject to change oh and um i should note i will not be showing actual leaked footage here that is not happening it's a surefire way to get this video struck down got dmca'd or even if i don't get the video dmca'd i don't like showing leaked footage because if I do that, I just feel like it creates a bad, it, it creates a bad relationship with the developer. And it, I think it creates resentment with people that work on the team, etc. And it's like, I, I, I want them to resent me for saying the game sucks. Not for saying that the game is out early or there's information about the game out early. Save your resentment for whenever I say it's bad or the cash shop is fucking bullshit. Okay, yeah, well, wait, you, you'll resent me, just not yet. Whatever. Also, just even talking about it, I think it poses a little bit of a risk, but generally uh, discussing things that are already out in public as there are articles and Reddit posts and it's all sorts unfortunately of stuff written about the news. information within the leak. All of that is out there. Not putting the genie back in the bottle. Anyways, yeah. we got a lot to get into. Lots of interesting information here. Let's so let's just go ahead and jump in. Generally, to set the groundwork here, the leaked footage consisted of a mix of activities. The okay. player was running around doing various side quests, got in a couple of dungeons, did some main story quests, explored the overworld, That's and even cool. spent some time in town interacting with various NPCs and vendors. So for starters, I gotta say, combat is looking fantastic. Everything feels and sounds very weighty really? and impactful. Now, this was the case all the way back in 2019 when I played a very early build of the game back at the in-person BlizzCon when that was still a thing. Imagine and it looks that. to be even more fine-tuned at this point, as you would hope being three years later, but yeah. I do think that that is one of the things that Diablo 3 does have over PoE is that a lot of the abilities in Diablo 3 do have a more visceral feel to them. They do feel like there is more impact to your attacks. I'm very impressed with how combat is looking in Diablo 4. It looks pretty awesome. The particular tester who leaked this footage was playing as a barbarian. He had a few long cooldown. What a surprise. A big dumb barbarian fucking leak the footage. 
abilities, two of which appear to be buffs with roughly 30 second cooldowns, and he had this big offensive attack with a 60 second cooldown. This did like a Hammer of the Ancient style slam, which would stun enemies in a somewhat small radius, and then it would be followed up immediately with this swing of these two massive chains that actually like filled up the entire screen, dealing massive damage to enemy enemies within. As for so they just took the um the Lost Ark Warrior uh, Awakening ability and they just put it in the game. They're like, wow, that looks pretty cool. Oh, so he does like the chains everywhere and everything dies. Oh, that's badass. Hell yeah, let's put that in the game. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> His basic resource builder, it looked like Frenzy. It provided a stacking buff that made attacks progressively faster. And his yeah. resource spender was Diablo 4's equivalent of Seismic Slam, except instead of a slam, it is an upheaval of rocks. In fact, the ability is called upheaval. We've known about it. It's been shown okay. in a ton of footage for D4 in the past. And it's a really cool looking ability. In terms of the pacing of combat, enemies did seem to require a few hits to actually take down, except for like the occasional tiny minion, almost nothing that he fought would be one shots. Although it's important to note that the player was under leveled the entire time. He progressed from levels 31 to 33 while he was spending time in zones that were level 35 plus because this- I think that it's better to have it be harder to kill stuff because like one of the best things about like how many of you guys play Diablo 3 like vanilla? One of the best fucking things in Diablo 3 vanilla is getting to the point where you can one shot stuff. Because if you start and you're already there, where's there to go? But like whenever you would get such good gear and you could actually fucking tank attacks and you could do certain things, it was so fucking good, man. It felt amazing is kind of MMO styled in that there are zones that have levels. The NPCs within those zones are going to be that level. So that certainly played a role in the time to kill being a little bit on the slower side. Also, um, I should note that leveling combat tends to be way different from end game combat in most ARPGs. I don't know if they're going to go Very exactly true. along the same lines of the sprinting at full speed, AOEing everything on the map with your entire screen filled with enemies and particle effects um, like they do in Diablo 3 or Path of Exile's endgame. Either way, the footage doesn't give us any indication one way. I feel like that is kind of always what it's going to end up at. But there are different variations of that. So, like, for example, you can also do, like, boss runs. Like, I remember we would farm Asmodan or we would farm uh, Siegebreaker. I think that's what the, the boss's name in Diablo 3 was. And I do think that doing stuff like that is also good. But I, I am not a fit. I don't think that being able to clear an entire screen with abilities and, you know, like, for example, like whenever I watch somebody that has like full gear on something like a, uh, I don't know, like a, a blade vortex character or something like that in, in PoE, I think that's fucking badass. The same as like doing a chaos dungeon in Lost Ark. You're just mowing down like hundreds of enemies at a time. It's fucking awesome. So I don't think either one of them are bad, and I think that the game should try to create different types of content for each type of gameplay. Honestly, I think Lost Ark does a great job at that. Or the other. I like what we see here, at least as it pertains to how the pacing is yeah. while leveling. I kind of like it. I like the slower pace that they're showing here. It looks pretty good. Now, before we jump in to talk about the other bits of gameplay systems, the world, the exploration, I do want to touch a little bit on the UI and map, as there were some noteworthy things here. The UI was pretty straightforward. This particular tester was playing on an ultra wide monitor, so keep that in mind. Some of the positioning stuff might change slightly for 16 by 9 resolutions. Also, happy to see ultra wide support. I got an ultra wide monitor last year i really enjoy it do you guys remember the ultra wide thing that people were able to do in diablo 3 so you could attack and see where the mobs were and like hit them off screen with certain abilities before they would aggro to you do you guys remember that yeah <laughs> yeah we did that bro i played a demon hunter on release i did that shit like crazy I like games that support it. So the minimap and quest log were both in the upper right hand corner. Pretty That's simplistic broken. It and was. clean looking uh, outlines there. Chat was located in the bottom right because again, this is like a shared world game. So you'll okay. be chatting with other players as you're roaming through the open world and towns. And then bottom center was the skill, the health and the XP bar. And yeah, I think everything looked really clean in this particular build, this current version of the UI. I like the way it looks. Not many complaints here. Uh, as I remember, I think that like, you really don't want to be in a situation where your UI is like Lost Ark or Tower of Fantasy. 
Like, Tower of Fantasy, whenever you're playing the game, when you're starting off the game, I feel like probably 20% of players just get a panic attack dealing with all the menus. It's like you have to go, okay, so you, if you want to go to your store, you have to go to the commission area, and then if you want to go to the commission area, you have to go to the weapon store, and then if you go to the weapon store, then you have to go to the store, the store area, and then if you want to go there and get the items for there, you have to go to the other store, and then buy the items from the other store, then go back to the weapon store, and then roll the weapon store with the gold nucleus, and you have to buy the gold nucleus. It's like, what is this? This is, ins it's stressful to even thinking about it. For the map, I got a pretty good look at this. He pulled it up a few times, but in particular, mm -hmm. when he was in town, I got to see everything. There were icons for every different type of NPC and vendor in town. The yeah. various shops, the blacksmith, the jewel crafter, repair, stable, etc., etc. There was also an option to pin a location. Now, presumably, this is going to let you mark spots for everyone in your party to see, or even if you just want to mark a spot yourself and then just track it on your mini map, this okay. seems to be an option that you'll be able to do. Also, when pulling up the map at the top of the the map screen was the name of the zone that you're in as well as its level like the the level of the yeah, zone I think and that your renown within that zone combined with this list of unlockables and collectibles plays into like this zone progression things right. like waypoints quest dungeons chest and a few other icons that i couldn't quite make out what they were for so you th so does that it sounds a lot like to me that they're doing what lost ark does is they have like different zone wide objectives for you to just complete. I think that's probably a good thing for like people that like doing completionist type content. Seems good to me. These would work towards leveling yeah, you up stuff, as you yeah. do these things, uncover these things, unlock these things, you gain more renown. And then once you fill up your renown in mm -hmm. a zone, you're going to get some reward. It reminds me a bit actually of how map completion works in Guild Wars 2. I really like it in that game. And if it does indeed function the same way, I think that's a nice uh, addition to D4, which is really it feels more and more MMO the more you dive into the game. That's the map good. page also had a journal with your current quest. As I said, I think that there is a a huge value in having a game that is not explicitly an MMO, but it's an open world shared space that you play alongside other people with. I think that the word MMO is getting to almost be outdated because there are so many games that are massively multiplayer and online be it the campaign or side quest mousing over any town on your map would show all of its available cool. services with the, their little individual icons so this will likely mean that certain towns won't have that their little any town on your map i would like you guys to know that this is now the second time that blizzard has added a gigantic snake into one of their games that they probably have no like, th there's, like, no reason why the snake... Remember the snake in Gundrak? And everybody was like, holy fuck, where is this? Where's the snake going? This is insane. And then Jesse Cox brings up the picture at BlizzCon of the snake, this gigantic fucking snake, and then Metzen or one of the guys there is like, wow. Man, our art team really has some cool ideas, huh? That's crazy. We'll have to talk about that. And they did it again. They fucking did it again. Yeah, it just look cool. Would show all of its available services with the, their little individual icons. So this will likely mean that certain mm -hmm. towns won't have everything. Like maybe there won't be an alchemist or a blacksmith in some smaller towns, but bigger towns will have all of that. You'll be able to tell what NPCs are in every location just by mousing over that particular location. And mm -hmm. as you drag your mouse over the mini map, it will highlight the various zones with a distinct outline for the zone, as well as if you've discovered it, it'll give you the name and the level range and all of that. That's okay. one more thing that is very MMO-like. There are particular regions and then particular zones within those regions, and they have level ranges. It's, it's really like an MMO, isn't it? Okay, yeah. so now I want to dive into the... Well, that's also, to be fair, it was a lot like how Diablo 3 was. Like, it, it's, 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 I mean, it's kind of the same idea world stuff and this is where we get a really lot uh, of the cool features about like the exploration and the play space and things that you'll be doing and stuff like that the world from what i saw here looks absolutely massive like piecing together how the character that i saw moving through the zone the time it took to go from one spot to the other and then seeing the size of the world map seems like this game might be quite huge they yeah i just want isometric elden ring let's just do that 
you've said as much, but you know, everyone says their game's big when they're trying to make a big game. They're like, yeah, it's the course. biggest one we've ever made. It's the biggest one ever existed. Looks like D4 might be pretty big. That's cool, right? Also, I love, love, love the setting. This isn't new information or news, but man, it's all very dark. They really have stuck true yeah. to that initial promise of going more in that more grim tone and setting. It's not a bright, colorful game. They have sharp divergence from the complaints and criticisms around D3 when it comes to that aspect of the game. Every time I agree with that, I, I, I think that's a good thing. And I do feel like if you go back and you play Diablo 3, my favorite act is Act 1. Because it's more gritty, darker, you're going through corridors and old churches and stuff like that. That's badass. When you step into a new zone, as you move from one to the next, there'll be a little pop-up in the center of the screen that will show you the, the zone's name as well as its level. And then as you move around the map, whether you're just exploring, grinding, heading towards a quest or whatever, you will occasionally see these little markers for public events that are nearby. These will be indicated by a little opaque red ring that will highlight an area where an event is taking place. And then if you walk into the ring, you will then join the event and it will have a name as well as a little bit of text telling you what your objective is like if it's take out enemies in fact i did see the player interact with one of these world events he had to, he did this thing called defiled ground where he had to slay these channelers to disrupt a ritual unfortunately the recording was cut up so i okay. didn't actually get to see what happened once you complete it presumably some loot drops <laughs> Today, Imagine RPG, that. right? Also, a lot of the quests that he did were very similar in nature, where they would paint like a big circle in an area and then ask you to do something, whether you have to find an NPC, the entrance to a building or cave, find and eliminate an enemy, whatever. Okay. Rarely in the quests that I saw were you being pointed. Like this right here, like this scene, this is very appealing to me. This is really, really cool. And I just hope that the game is going to be able to preserve and, and keep some level of like that, like the unknown descent into darkness. Because like, obviously, whenever you play games like this, it becomes formulaic and just like it, it's no longer exciting because you've just done it so many times. And I, I just hope that Diablo 4 has as big of a, of a fucking delay between those two times as possible to the exact location of the thing you were you would be given a general area and then would have to search within that area and one thing i really really like that this game is doing is the interactable world traversal so you can climb and scale walls oh, wow. and cliffs at various locations as well as other so things like, like rising jump houses. over ravines or go through narrow like passageways very 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 similar to what was done and seen in lost ark you go up yeah. to the spot that's clearly an interactable location you then click a button in diablo 4's case it looks like that is space bar and then your character does whatever it is uh, going up i think that's a good thing and just overall i feel like lost ark had a lot of really great ideas like, I, I do really think, like, Lost Ark, like, I think it's a great game. I, I love Lost Ark. It's just that I've beaten it. I haven't played it a lot recently, right? I'm kind of done. But, uh, yeah, I, I like it a lot. This is awesome. Down a ladder or a cliff, jumping across something, uh, scurrying through. Again, whatever it happens to yeah. be. I also liked this was denoted by these, like, little glowing footprints uh, at the location. That is what your indication that there is some, like, interactable traversal thing. And I think this is really cool. One played out example was the player had to find his way into this keep to complete one of the main campaign yeah. quests. But as he walked up to the front door, it was locked shut. So he walked around the area until he eventually found this location where the wall could be scaled. So he climbed up the wall, got to a ledge, climbed up another wall, jumped over a couple of gaps, went down a ladder, making his way in and going through these areas, fighting some enemies in between. He was then able to interact with a pulley system to raise this portcullis and complete the quest. And this one thing that I'm really worried about whenever I hear something like that is Blizzard not having like rewards that are appropriate for the time investment that each one of these like effectively world quests or bounties requires. So like this was an issue with like uh with like BFA especially where there would be some world quests that would take 3 seconds and other world quests that would take 3 minutes. So nobody would ever do the world quests that took 3 minutes. 
So I hope that Blizzard, whenever they're designing these things that are a little bit more involved, that have like four or five steps to them, that the amount of time that it takes to complete that thing is counterbalanced by a higher reward structure. It was all pretty cool. It feels like way more exploratory and immersive than Diablo 3's. Because I, I really think that Blizzard has always done a very bad job at creating scaling proportional rewards with stuff like that. It's like everything's the same, but it's not. So, like, you just have people that tactically ignore certain types of content. Flat environments, like, yes, D3 has some terrain elevation and descending, but yeah, having like this extra layer, I think, adds a lot more verticality and depth to the world. And I really, I really like it. I think it looks pretty good. It looks, I also again, really like those things, too, with the verticality, is because most of them, whenever your character enters the animation to climb, it becomes invincible, so you can exploit it. That's how you can beat, I think it's Titalos and uh, Lost Ark really easily. Every single time he goes to do that big explosion, just go down the fucking ramp. Problem solved. More immersive. I also saw him go through a couple of dungeons. These looked really cool. Pretty simple stuff. You will move through multiple scenarios with objectives or mm -hmm. targets to eliminate along the path. So you go in the dungeon and then there's a locked door and oh no, some enemies spawn in. So you kill the enemies and then you can go through the door or you walk up to this tomb, opening it, hoping to find a crown or something. But oh no, a boss spawns. Stuff like that. You know, basic ARPG like dungeon progression. Dungeons also seem leveled. There will be multiple levels, but instead of going okay. through like in Diablo 3, these ones just happen in and of themselves. You will load huh? into a dungeon, but then within the dungeon, you are fluidly moving through the levels. And a lot of it also involves that interactable terrain where you're jumping a gap or going down a ladder as you navigate through this environment. It's all really I cool. do hope that they have dungeons that you have to go back to once you get higher level. Because I like the idea of like you complete part of a dungeon, but you can't go any farther in that dungeon because you're not powerful enough. Like, it, it makes it feel like you really can go back. It's like, you know, for example, in, in WoW, like, you have... There's, like, certain NPCs in the game where they're, like, high-level and, like, more powerful NPCs in low-level zones. And it gives you, like, a benchmark that you can test yourself against them. Like, I think that's really cool. Is it HD? Uh, yeah, this is HD. Stuff really good. I really, really like MC it. inside oh, of BRD. From what we yeah. saw, there are yeah. a lot of dungeons. Now we actually it's already badass. knew this. Um, they, I remember they said somewhere like 150 dungeons were in the game. Every single zone that wow. he was walking through would have several dungeon markers on the map. It seems like they are just about around every corner. So if you like dungeons and how they're presented and the sort of gameplay elements that roll in with them, which I do really like that. Yeah. There's a lot of them in this game. That's pretty cool. Some other notable stuff about just the world and stuff. There were interactive interactable objects that played into the story. So you'd find like this tablet, you could click on it and there'd be a couple paragraphs to read about the lore if you care about that stuff. Great. Resources are in the game. For some reason that completely flew over my head. I didn't know that was a thing. But yes, there will be like herbs and ore to collect in the environment. And this plays into the game's crafting system. More MMO That's elements in like D4 that. that I just, uh, for some reason, was unaware of. Yeah, again, just like more things that Lost Dark does well. And I think Diablo 4 should have that also. That's cool. And then also there were these items called lost caches that would reward permanent stat boost for all of your characters on a realm. So in this gameplay, what? the player came across one that added two strength and it said it said two strength for every character of yours on this particular realm. This feels a lot just like long-term account progression. I don't know. Not a fan of account progression. I don't like that. I think that's silly. Uh, I think that it should just be per, uh, like, yeah, not not a fan of that whatsoever. But yeah, like Mokokos and stuff like that, it looks nice. What the realm um, delineation is, uh, I'm assuming a dividing factor between, like, hardcore characters or seasonal Soulstar. characters yeah, or great. normal characters. I presume that's what it is, unless realms actually mean like MMO style servers. Again, I don't know what that distinction is, but yeah, these things are like- a, a I'll give my, my, my two cents on this. I don't feel like servers provide any value to me as a player other than to artificially gate me away from playing with other people that are my friends. So it's okay if you have like a server and those are the people that you see out in the open world and those are the only people you see out in the open world, kind of like how like WoW battle groups used to be, but I do think that if you want to play with somebody else, 
There should never be any restriction for that in Diablo. Like in Diablo 3, you want to play with somebody? Okay, you're on the US servers, they're on the US servers, you play with them. That's it. That's the way the game should be. A realm-wide progression, account-wide progression in a sense. Okay, let's jump into town because the player did spend a bit of time going in and out of I town. think account-wide progression, like basically, I, I, I kind of, I know people like don't like Lost Ark for some ways. I feel like a lot of like what he's saying are just things that are in Lost Ark. And I think that's a good thing. Blizzard is going back to their roots. Stealing good ideas from other game developers and then putting them in their game and then saying that they're their own ideas. This is amazing. I'm happy. This is exactly what we've always wanted them to do. On interacting with a few NPCs and we gleaned some information here. So there is a stable. We know that mounts are in the game. These are unlocked after completing the campaign. When he spent time in the stable, we saw there were multiple tabs. There was one for the mounts themselves because there will be different mounts for you to collect. One for saddles, which- Also important thing about mounts to keep in mind, uh, you put mounts in the game, you can sell mounts in the game. It's obvious you want to have mounts in the game to just be cosmetic. I'm not sure if there are any stats associated with that or not. And then one for trophies. And I do believe these are just additional things you can toss on your mount. Like here's a spike with the skull of some cool boss that you defeated or something along those lines. There was an NPC called the purveyor of curiosities. This is gambling. He sells unidentified items that you exchange these murmuring orbs for. And it was said that these orbs would be found by completing those world events that we talked about earlier. So yeah. you do world events, you get this special currency separate from the base currency of gold wait but you can't buy the gamba currency on the store well this game's ruined yeah yeah i mean guys it's not no no we got excited all for nothing that is what is spent on not the yet okay all right good. this particular npc there was also a weapon vendor that sold a rotating stocks of items that would be changing within a set duration of time blacksmith was where you could like craft that. weapons armor as well as repair and salvage items there was a scroll vendor who sold the i hope that they have something like imagine if like you were playing the game and every single time that like you interact with one of these vendors you were able to invite other people, like your friends, like let's say like you're leveling up. This is especially good for like people whenever the game first comes out. Like you're leveling up and it's like, oh, this vendor is selling a legendary weapon and like you invite your friends so they can buy it. Like that's really cool to me. A town portal scroll, as well as the scroll that brings you back to the entrance they of the dungeon. And he dude. also sold True. a summoning scroll, which is said to be used to summon party members to your location. That that's great. pretty cool. And then finally, there was an alchemist. You would yeah, go here to very upgrade your potion strength. The alchemist also had elixirs, which would give you boost to things like precision, crushing, assault. There were elemental resist elixirs. And you can also refine resources at the alchemist, your ores, herbs, and leathers. And then finally, the alchemist sold incense these 20 minute buffs of various kinds increasing your strength or your crit right. or your hit chance or whatever progression systems the player did level up twice during the recording both times leveling awarded a single skill point and the skill tree which we saw was very expansive it was a web style skill tree with a lot of branches and potential i hope they don't make the skill tree complicated for the sake of making it complicated to have it compete uh stylistically with poe I don't think that a PoE skill tree for every game is a good thing. I think that, like, I view Path of Exile as the new Diablo, and I view Diablo as the new Gauntlet. Gauntlet is not super complicated. There are nuances to it, and if you play a warrior, you know, like, your potions don't do as much damage, and... You know, like magic abilities, yeah, right? And, and like you can take a little bit more damage, but like for the most part, you just pretty much go in, you play the game, and like there's a few things you can change, that's about it. So I, th I think, yeah, just keep it simple. Don't put, like, don't add talents for just like 5% more damage to something, right? And make sure all of the talents, or as many of them as possible, are transformative in some way paths to take it's very similar to path of exile skill tree um and we have seen this outside of the leaked footage like there have been examples yeah. of the skill tree blizzard has showcased this in some of their prior blog posts also there were weapon levels now i don't know if this Ooh. is barbarian specific or not but this player improved weapon levels numerous times throughout the recording he reached mace level three which okay. awarded this passive damage boost to stunned enemies this would be doubled whenever using maces he reached sword rank one which gave bonus fuel 
fury whenever hitting crowd controlled enemies which would be doubled when using swords this is just like an on use progression system the more you use these weapons the better you get and the more bonuses that you that's get. interesting again I don't know if this is barbarian specific or not. I'm just unaware. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about the in-game shop because we did get a look okay, at the current iteration in the Friends and here Family Alpha. Here we fucking go. Okay, so the in-game shop was broken up into two tabs. There was the cosmetic tab as well as the palladium tab. The palladium is the name of the in-game currency. Uh, for the test, they were crediting players 5,000 free palladium that they could use to try out the sh shop and you spend it as of now on just cosmetics at least that's what they had in this build there's gonna be more than just cosmetics though cosmetic tab had some featured items there was various sets a different number of pieces so the lion of ariat set was a full set for the barb which cost yeah. 2500 palladium All that raised makes by sense. wolves was a full set for rogues which cost 2500 there this is in diablo immortal keep in mind i'm pretty sure was the sunken treasure set this was a three-piece set for the yeah. druid that cost 1500 there was also a three-piece set for your horse that cost 700 a see full that's why you gotta add the mounts you gotta add the mounts because then you can sell the mounts set for druids that cost 2500 and a three-piece set for rogues that cost 2000 total shot in the dark but okay it's not unheard of for like a hundred in-game currency to be equivalent to a dollar yeah. at a base and then as you buy bundles you get like percentage discounts right the higher the bundle the more value you get as a baseline <laughs> yes if we say one dollar per 100 in-game currency this is a guess Okay, make that clear. This is okay. just a guess. But if that is the conversion based on these current prices, they actually don't look that bad. The If you do that, then this these 2,500 full sets. I don't care if they're $1,000. I don't give a fuck if they're, they're cosmetics. Who gives a fuck? Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, if they put the cosmetic in, it's $1,000. Who cares? I'm not going to buy it. If they put it in the game, it's $10. I'm not going to buy it. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, if I like the way it looks, then yeah, I would buy one. But, like, nobody gives a fuck about, like... I, I feel like adding and putting cosmetics into a game... Like... And if you have other cosmetics in the game that are, like, earned... Why would you use store cosmetics? You know, unless you're trying to create some sort of, like... You know, mix and match type thing. Would go for $25 for a full cosmetic set. And no, it is a lot. It's like the third of a price of a full AAA, like retail yeah. box price game. But also in the world of cosmetic skins, that is in the medium range when it comes to pricing. There are it's unfortunately that it's unfortunate that so many of these companies have successfully anchored the price around such a ridiculously high thing for uh you know some pixels on the screen it's like this is it, it's reasonable for it to be ten dollars why like where's the like where's the value between a ten dollar and a twenty dollar skin you, you know what i mean it's kind of weird but either way i think that selling skins in a game that's buy to play that is being continuously developed as long as there are other skins that are cool in the actual game i, I don't find this to be bad this is okay games that sell cosmetic skins for 40 50 60 dollars that is not uncommon i know yeah. though the, a lot of caveats here this game does have a season pass we know that and it is a full box price game we know that as well yeah. so i'm not i'm not saying this is great i would love for cosmetics to just be unlocks in game but that's not the that world would, we live in and yeah. again we don't need to go down this Imagine rabbit hole that. every time this conversation comes up within the context yeah. of boy people sure do charge a lot for cosmetic skins and outfits in games whether they're free to play or full price if the conversion that i'm getting again guessing if that is accurate as well these actually seem reasonable all of this all of this all of this is subject to change it involves some guesswork we don't know for sure, but it's who knows. We'll see that what looks happens, fucking but badass. that is the in-game shop. Some other noteworthy details from this leak that I want to bring up. Um, <laughs> the game had a lot of unfinished bits, and I'm talking things that were just completely missing textures. Well, I'm sure some of those will make it to the live game. A lot of walls, a lot of pathways, a lot of bridges, and then yep. buildings that were basically just massive gray Diablo boxes. Three. Also missing was voice acting. There was none. And every NPC that the player talked with had a uh, text-to-speech dialogue, like the baseline Microsoft text-to-speech thing. It sounded hilarious. That's actually it was really yeah, that's ridiculous funny. sounding. It was uh, actually it, it was entertaining because it was so ridiculous sounding. But yes, textures missing. I, I wish fucking I, I wish Lost Ark had done that. I honestly. think 
think that the 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 voice acting in Lost Ark is so fucking bad that it makes the game worse. It's actually that bad that it makes the entire game just a little bit worse. Saying that the voice acting isn't even in the game yet as of this build. All of that and obviously the stuff is coming but I just I just wanted yeah. to mention it. it was funny something actually gameplay related that is worth mentioning a uh, loot drops very very limited a far cry from like the showering of loot that we saw in Diablo 3 in the hour of gameplay that I watched I only saw a handful of items drop I think it was under five I'm not ex that's probably I don't really know how to feel about that I'm not really sure now if you want my personal opinion and I know this might be an unpopular opinion because Diablo has always been known for this I don't like the Magic Find meta gameplay. I'm not a fan of like Magic Find type mechanics, like luck mechanics, like uh, New World has luck. I don't like luck and Magic Find stuff. I just feel like it's it's just it's, it's weird and annoying to me. I just wish that you know you do harder content, you get better gear. That's it exaggerating most of that there was like three pieces that came from the dungeon run that the player did the overworld didn't drop anything at all basically but again this is leveling content also this is a beta or alpha or whatever it's yeah, classified as it's right super now early. so we won't know until full release how the loot uh distribution is also because it's a leveling content it's not gonna look anything like the end game loot sh loot loot will be much more plentiful when you're doing end game stuff of i would course, expect that yeah it. but at least the leveling content in the current build loot drops are very very rare in an hour of gameplay i kid you not there were like five, five items, items holy dropped. shit it that's that, crazy it was that rare so pretty interesting i gotta say my ultimate takeaway after watching this leaked footage sounds is like that's that not enough game is looking pretty good like as i mentioned the gameplay looks spot on i also absolutely love the look and atmosphere of the game's world even with the missing textures and the lack of voice acting in this recording uh, and it seems pretty clear that they're going to be delivering a solid gameplay experience however it will remain the case that up until and till after launch there are still some things that we're not sure of like how is the end game and longevity of the title going to hold up where will i think that's really where a game like lost ark came out ahead is that lost ark and i think path of exile is the same way is that path of exile has so much depth inside of their end game that if you want to play path of exile all the time you can put 300 500 hours into the game and you still might not finish all of the end game content and also the end game content is like stacked on top of each other it's like you're not going to be able to do uber cirrus before you can do normal cirrus and you're probably not gonna be able to do normal cirrus well obviously until you beat the uh the fucking conquerors and you're not gonna be able to beat them until you were able to do like tier you know like 15 or 16 maps or so so like you and then also like uber cirrus is not the hardest fight in the game you've got the searing exarch you've got the fucking eater of worlds you've got the uber uber elder and all this other crazy shit so it's like you have end game that builds on itself and you go through the steps in the end game right it's not just like an open an open plane and you just go to whichever one you want you have to go through one then the other and i think that's one thing that i really liked about lost ark is that you had to progress through tier one into tier two into tier three you would do legion raids you'd get the gear from Valten, level that up and then you'd do vicus and now we're having cockle sadon come out and you know you have brawl shaws after that and so you go through the different raid tiers and it makes the progression of the end game feel a lot better and i think it feels a thousand times better than like in diablo 3 whenever you're just fucking like you just do higher rift levels of the same exact thing it's like just so fucking boring like whenever i'm in the end game i want to be fucking fighting you know something like shaper or something like that right i don't want to just be fighting the same shit that i fought before with a bigger number attached to it that's boring to me settle on monetization we know the basics we know that there's a cosmetic shop and a season pass how far do they push the, push those prices and are they going to end up going in that selling convenience route if so how bad is that either way there's been nothing that they have shown so far that indicates that they are looking to sell convenience items at the battle pass 
They have not said anything that indicates that, and the only convenience features that the game has indicated were level boosts, and Blizzard explicitly stated that the level boosts would not be able to, they were available with the free battle pass, and you could not accelerate their acquisition by spending money. Yet? Well, of course that's yet. But this is what they said. Now, if it changes, then I will talk about that. But I think that you should listen to what people say. Yeah, it's like, yes, that this is what they say. Like, it's one thing, like in Diablo Immortal, they never explicitly said stuff like this the same way that they did with Diablo 4. This is just a fact. As somebody who spends a lot of time reading this stuff, and I've been watching all these videos, I've kept up with all of this stuff, I know for a fact they have been much more specific and much more direct with what they've said about Diablo 4. Any doubt in my mind, at the very least, when it came to the question of can today's Blizzard still make something that looks and feels good to play? These have been seemingly mostly answered. It does appear like Diablo 4 is shaping up nicely. I played the game again three years ago at BlizzCon, and I liked what it was then, and it's just looking way better even now. So I'm pretty impressed, although there are still some pretty big questions and concerns that need to be cleared up that we won't know until the game is actually out. In the meantime, though, I will continue to keep my eye on the game i am happy that i actually took the time to watch this because yes i'm it's looking good and i'm looking forward to actually getting yes. my hand everything that i've heard about diablo 4 has been good that's the truth everything that i've heard about diablo 4 has been good i can't think of anything specifically that they've said that made me think to myself fuck it's gonna be awful hands on it again and trying it in the upcoming beta test which appear to be happening Sometime soon, actually, there was just a blog post uh, released the other day where Blizzard announced that their public mm -hmm. beta closed test of the testing of endgame systems like would year, be taking right? place soon. These will include things like the souped up nightmare dungeons, hell tides, which are like zone wide enemy buffs for better loot, uh, whispers cool. of the dead, which are kind of like bounty quest, it seems, and then the fields of hatred, which is the open world PvP. They'll be testing all of these features, everything centric on the endgame very, very soon. Invites apparently will be going out Shortly, with Blizzard prioritizing players who have recently spent a lot of time participating in Endgame for Diablo 2, II, Diablo 3, and Diablo Immortal. I am not one of those players. And funny, because usually... I hope they also add people that played PoE too. Like, I don't know how they can really determine that or not. But, like, if there was a survey where it's like, you know, what's your experience with each of these games? Like, it would be great to get people that play PoE a lot, but, like, I mean, obviously, like, I'll be playing it, Rich will be playing it, and I think that a lot of the guys that play PoE will be playing it, too. Yeah, Quinn, etc. I'll jump in and I'll check out Diablo 3 Seasons, and a new season just rolled out, I think, a couple weeks ago or something. I've been busy farming Alteric Valley for Wrath Classic. Ooh, I big mistake. Just, I'm literally, go to the tower, cap the tower, get the graveyard, get that other tower, get those two towers, try to stop them from recapping. Ten minutes later, I got seven or eight hundred uh, honor, and I do it again. Wow. And again. <laughs> again, I'm, I'm going crazy, but yeah, I, I don't know. Yep. We'll see if I get invited. I Relatable. am hoping to check this thing out. As always, Very especially with Modern Blizzard, there's a lot of caveats. There's a big old asterisk, and there's a lot of things that are still up in the air, but ultimately, yeah. I'm always just looking for fun games to play. I think it's important to, you know, whenever Blizzard's doing something good, say, this is good. I'm not a fan of uh, shit on anything that they say or do because Blizzard could change their mind later on in the future. It's just like, that's, it's not a, it's not conducive to having a good relationship with the developer or with another person to automatically assume everything that they're doing is lying. And if you do assume that, then just don't play the game, right? I mean, that, that's, that's all it comes down to. The Stumer mentality. Well, I mean, Blizzard's earned that distrust, but I still think it's important to look at what you're seeing and not what you're believing. And I will forever remain curious yeah. and wanting to see where Blizzard goes next <laughs> with that big old asterisk with Blizzard yeah. and Monday Blizzard compared to old Blizzard, all of that. Again, retreading old ground. But that is it for today. That is a look and a discussion about the recent leaks. We'll see um, what happens with this video. Hmm? Yeah. All right. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.
I don't think there's anything really bad so, about that video. Like, I, I really don't think so. There's nothing that's like really so indicative, uh, indicative of like anything crazy that's in the game or anything like that, right? Uh, like, we've watched a lot of Force Gaming videos. He's made, this guy plays pretty much like almost all the same games, minus a handful of the same games I do. So like, I watched a lot of his videos. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just hoping that Diablo 4 doesn't, I, I hope that it's, I, I just hope the end game is fun. Like, that's what I'm really worried about, is if the end game isn't fun, and if it's fucking annoying and not fun, uh, not enjoyable to play. Yeah, uh, that, that's what matters the most to me. Force gaming's great? Yeah, I think so. Anything about Paragon system? No, but it seems like there is going to be a pseudo Paragon system with map-wide unlocks that are account-wide. I think that all types of, like, progression on a character outside of, like, their levels, like Paragon levels, that kind of stuff, I would like if a lot of that stuff was account wide because I feel like whenever you have a lot of character specific progression, it also causes people to not want to level alts. And if you're going to go with the season based game where people already are going to be re leveling regularly, why make that even more hard to do? Why not just make it, uh, make it easier and not have friction for the sake of friction? So yeah, Paragon's stupid to be honest. I didn't like how Paragons were, uh, they were unlimited. I was not a fan of that.